In this episode, let's talk about the Dream Chaser as it gets closer to its maiden flight. Just recently, the company revealed the astronaut training and preparations for the first launch have commenced. Furthermore, a significant process has been made on the Tenacity test vehicle reaching important milestone. This achievement holds immense significance considering the years of construction and dedication invested in the development of Tenacity Dream Chaser. This spaceplane design is breaking all the records by how lengthy it really is, since it was first introduced in 2004 and the fact that Sierra Space have successfully powered it on, signaling a new chapter in the history of human spaceflight. By its complexity, it will not give in to the Orion spacecraft, Dragon or even Starship. But the ease in reusability will most likely put pressure onto commercially used space vehicles and the industry as a whole. But the question still remains unanswered. Will it fly and when? So, subscribe to the channel and let us delve into the details, discuss the remaining tasks that need to be completed, provide insights into what to expect in the upcoming weeks, and more. This is Adventures in Space. On May 31st, Sierra Space, the aeronautics company responsible for the Dream Chaser shuttle project, announced the successful activation of their vehicle for the first time. During an evaluation of the vehicle's electrical systems, power was supplied to the nearly finished spacecraft known as Tenacity, which is the initial Dream Chaser model. This achievement signifies a significant milestone for Sierra Space, indicating that their shuttle is now ready to depart from their assembly facility in Louisville, Colorado. The subsequent and final series of tests, including crucial assessments such as thermal and vacuum testing for human habitation, will be conducted at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio. These evaluations are crucial before the Dream Chaser can be transported to Cape Canaveral for the necessary launch preparations. The initial flight of the Dream Chaser will feature the DC-100 cargo variant, chosen for its ease of construction and suitability for test flights without crew. However, a crewed version, the DC-200, is currently under development and astronauts are currently underdoing training for its operation. Despite progress being made, the specific date for the first launch has not been announced. This delay is partly due to ongoing testing of the Dream Chaser and also due to the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket encountering its own set of delays. It is worth noting that the Dream Chaser's design has been in development for an extensive period, making it one of the longest-running design projects in the history of space exploration. The concept of Dream Chaser has been evolving towards its current objective for nearly two decades. The project was initiated in 2004, seven years prior to the official retirement of NASA's original shuttle program. At that time, there were no viable alternatives to replace the aging shuttles, especially those with comparable reusability. Consequently, several projects were launched in 2004 to explore potential solutions, one of which eventually evolved into the Artemis program. Additionally, a group of smaller companies, many of which no longer exist, embarked on the mission to construct an enhanced shuttle based on previous NASA designs for commercial space travel. The companies did not simply postpone progress for 20 years. Instead, each acquisition brought renewed support to the project's engineering team, resulting in increased testing and innovations driven by technological advancements. These efforts have culminated in the current state of development, a supersonic spaceplane characterized by minimal moving parts, facilitating easy launch and retrieval. Sierra Space, the present design team, is primarily focusing on tailoring the Dream Chaser for commercial applications, specifically in conjunction with Blue Origin's upcoming space station, the Orbital Reef. Surprisingly, much of the original plan remains intact. The fundamental concept that endures in today's model revolves around a compact vehicle with a lifting body design. This design allows the entire body of the Dream Chaser to function as a single, large wing, enabling it to glide smoothly even without power. The NASA shuttles shared a similar design, albeit on a larger scale, which facilitated their guided descent onto runways through onboard computer systems or skilled pilots in emergency situations. 
Dream Chaser embraces the core concept by utilizing a thermal protection system reminiscent of NASA shuttles, albeit with modern enhancements. The heat shield on its underside consists of silica-based black tiles, while the nose and leading edges of the wings are covered by a new composite material called toughened Unipiece Fibros Reusable Oxidation Resistant Ceramic. This composite, known as Tough Rock, is a remarkable heat-resistant material capable of withstanding temperatures of up to 3600 degrees Fahrenheit. The most significant innovation, however, lies in the inclusion of the large integrated flexible environment module. This inflatable habitat resembles the Bigelow inflatable modules that were successfully tested on the International Space Station in 2022. In the crude versions of the Dream Chaser, this module will transform the shuttle from being approximately four times shorter than the previous NASA shuttles to expanding into a habitation module with a diameter of about 27 feet equivalent to a three-story building. One crucial advancement over the older shuttles is its ease of launch. Dream Chaser is designed to be launched atop the ULA's Vulcan rocket, accompanied by its sizable Shooting Star cargo module. This module, which attaches to the rear of the Dream Chaser, has a substantial capacity, capable of accommodating up to 9,900 pounds of both pressurized and unpressurized cargo. The Shooting Star module exemplifies Dream Chaser's versatility by enabling the transportation of modules and scientific equipment developed by other organizations. While Dream Chaser is a distinctive project, its development shares similarities with NASA's Space Launch System, both of which underwent evolution under different project names, involving teams of engineers from various companies, universities, and international partners. It is remarkable to consider that Dream Chaser has persevered over the years. Reflecting on its development history, one can observe a dedicated group of engineers who took their time to adapt NASA's shuttle design into something more feasible and manageable. The endurance of Dream Chaser for two decades of testing, encompassing numerous programs and teams, can be attributed to the fact that the technology and the necessity for a solution like the current Dream Chaser did not exist back in 2004, but are prevalent now. Additionally, with the downfall and dismantling of Virgin Galactic, Sierra Space faces minimal competition in the commercial space plane sector. Dream Chaser represents an affordable and adaptable platform capable of transporting cargo to space stations like the ISS and the Orbital Reef, while also facilitating the placement of scientific satellites into their designated orbits, before returning and effortlessly landing on the runway. Such versatility is unattainable with a traditional capsule design. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. We have new updates for you with everything space industry related every week and much more. As always, this was Georgie with Adventures in Space and I will see you at the next one.